here. It's great to be here uh, once again at Bagram with General Mick Nicholson. Uh, and I'll say a few things about our meetings today, and then uh, both uh, General Nicholson and I will be pleased to respond to your questions. Um, I uh, uh, have come here for two main purposes. The one is to thank him, our NATO partners, and our Afghan partners for their efforts all together uh, to ensure a bright future for the Afghan people and to protect our own people from attacks originating here. I have uh, full confidence in General Nicholson, uh, and that's, uh, that's true also. The chairman and the president were very lucky to have him here. I've known him for a long time. I have great confidence in his leadership, and I'm very pleased that he uh, is here with his wife also. And I want to mention that my uh, wife Stephanie is here also, and that's the other reason why I'm here is to, uh, it's holiday time is approaching and to thank the wonderful men and women uh, who have performed so well here in Afghanistan and, you know, indirectly Americans going back many years uh, who have done so well, sacrificed so much, remember all of them at holiday time. Uh, and uh, right since I'm here at Bagram also, and I'll have a moment shortly to uh, especially remember them, uh, but also in our thoughts and prayers of the families of those who perished here, uh, uh, here at Bagram recently in the incident. And again, we'll be visiting that site shortly. I just came from Kabul, had productive meetings with President Ghani. Uh, and discussed the continued U.S. commitment to Afghanistan. I commended the determination of the Afghan uh, security forces. Um, this, uh, uh, it, I've made many visits to Afghanistan myself. This was the first place I came when I became Secretary of Defense, uh, so I know it well. And um, I am therefore able to say both to General Nicholson but to all the U.S. service member, members here how proud I am of uh, what they're doing here and how well they're doing it. And uh, so in addition to wishing them a happy holidays, there's a big congratulations due here and that's, I'm giving that to them uh, as well. They're pursuing two key missions for us. The first is the counterterrorism mission, and the second is giving enabling support to the Afghan security forces. And uh, the United States uh, made three key decisions in 2016 that General Nicholson and I and Chairman Dunford recommended to President Obama, and he approved that it will shape our future involvement here. Uh, the first uh, has to do with the authorities that General Nicholson has. Last time I was here, if you uh, remember, uh, I announced the President's decision to grant General Nicholson some additional authorities that essentially uh, permit him to act in, anticipace, in anticipation of events that could have strategic effect. And uh, at that time, we, we, Mick and I were explaining to you uh, why that would make a difference. And now we can explain to you, now we can show you how it has made a difference. Uh, and so if you ask that question, uh, Mick will be prepared to answer that. But I think you've seen that in the results over the last few months here in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, the one sign of which is that the Taliban failed to achieve the objective that it set itself this year, uh, which was to take a financial capital, and they didn't do what they set out to do. Uh, a second decision was made by the President to uh, retain in 2017 84 48 uh, troop level here in Afghanistan, the 5,500 that had been planned earlier. And uh, the third was to make a continued financial commitment 
to the support of the Afghan security forces. And in our conversations with President Ghani today, uh, he was explaining how those decisions, of, uh, uh, both physically and in morale terms, uh, strengthened the Afghan government and the Afghan security forces. And looking ahead, we discussed a couple of issues as well. Uh, for the Americans, we always remember what brought us here in the first place, um, which is uh, our, our need to make sure that this is never again a place from which terrorist attacks arise against the United States, and we have an opportunity here to maintain a counterterrorism platform uh, in a part of the world where that's very important. That's, that's very valuable for the United States. Um, and uh, so uh, that's a very important objective to us. And so we're, we're grateful uh, both for our Afghan partners and we're above all grateful for our wonderful uh, uh, men and women serving here today. So with that, uh, let me and Nick uh, take your questions. I can. Uh, my question is primarily for, for General Nicholson, I think, at least for starters. Uh, General, obviously, uh, soon you will be looking for a different commander in chief and a different uh, secretary of state. I'm wondering whether you may have received any kind of guidance from the President of the United States over the next year. And, and B, are you already considering some options, some different approaches to that? Okay. So let me just say something about the trans transition first, and then you answer, you answer the question. I, 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 I just want to say um, that the, our, the department is uh, working on and committed to uh, a transition that allows the new team there to hit the ground uh, uh, running. Uh, we're responding to and will continue to respond to and make a uh, questions and to make available people, including General Nicholson. That hasn't been requested yet, but I just want to make it clear that if that it does come up in the future, of course, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make General Nicholson uh, available. So, Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And uh, Bob, what I'd add to that is uh, the fundamental rationale for being here in Afghanistan, as the Secretary of Reference, has not changed. When you look at the Afghanistan-Pakistan region, there are 20 U.S. designated terrorist groups in this region. Our policy of having an enduring counterterrorism effort alongside our Afghan partners is, in my, in my view, very sound and something we need to continue. If you look at this past year in terms of our counterterrorism effort, uh, we have focused on Al-Qaeda and Islamic State in particular with great success. Uh, and we wish to continue that. So I think the fundamental logic is, uh, is very sound. The uh, second part of our mission, as the Secretary mentioned, is to train, advise, and assist the Afghan forces. When you look at the performance of the Afghan forces this year, it was a tough year. They were tested, but they prevailed. And this is a testimony to the effectiveness of our mission here. It also should be noted that we have a 39-nation coalition here. So this uh, mission, and it's uh, Continuance has been endorsed as recently as the Warsaw Summit, where those uh, coalition partners all committed to four more years of uh, help to the Afghans, and at the Brussels Donor Conference, where donors uh, uh, expressed an intent to commit another $15.2 billion to development. So I think we see a lot of positive momentum and uh, effectiveness uh, stemming from this policy. Well, with respect to the first part of your question, I think the uh, 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 
interests that we're pursuing here are clear and enduring, namely uh, to uh, protect ourselves from attack ever arising again from Afghan territory. And that's one thing that we're doing here. The other is to make Afghanistan able to secure its own territory uh, so that it can remain what it is, which is a, uh, a, a place in a, uh, uh, in a part of the world that we need to watch uh, from which we can have strong security uh, partners. So those are those interests will endure, and our, and our approach to it is based upon the pursuit of those two uh, American national security interests. Thank you, sir. And uh, I think a good way to respond to that question is to look at what uh, President Ghani and his team, along with Chief Executive Abdul, the ministries have defined as success. So they have a national campaign plan. That campaign plan ends with a reconciliation with the belligerents or a reconciliation with enough of them that the balance can be uh, managed uh, by the Afghan security forces. So I'd say this year we're on that glide path. When you look at the, uh, the amount of the population secured by the government, it, is, it equates to roughly two-thirds, about 64%. Uh, the Taliban uh, are viewed uh, with great disdain by the Afghan people. 87% would tell you that a return to Taliban rule would be bad for the country. There's also great confidence expressed in the Afghan security forces. And so, and again, roughly three quarters of the population say they have uh, faith and confidence in the Afghan security forces. So these ingredients add up to, uh, a, I think, a year-on-year -year increase in the amount of uh, security provided by the government over the population, and that is the objective of the national campaign plan, to a point where the uh, enemy is incentivized to reconcile. Now, let's look at the Hezbi Islami uh, peace uh, deal that was reached this year. Uh, this uh, is an important milestone. It, it demonstrates that former belligerents can reconcile with the government, and next year they'll go through a reintegration process. So I think uh, year on year, uh, with the support provided by the international community from the Warsaw Summit, from Brussels, uh, we're going to see this gradual improvement in the situation until they get to this critical mass of the population that they control, and ideally a reconciliation with the belligerents. Thank you. General Nicholson you, and, and, and Secretary Carter, you both spoke of uh, efforts against uh, terrorism. And uh, Secretary Carter, you, you spoke of great success going against Al Qaeda. Uh, since the original authorization for, for the use of military force here was specifically tailored to go after Al Qaeda, to what extent has Al Qaeda been eliminated from Afghanistan? And how far are, is the United States from achieving? Uh, well, th this has been a, a, a big year in that um, connection, uh, David, and since he uh, uh, conducted many of those operations, uh, let me give uh, a big uh, uh, pleasure of reporting the results. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And uh, first, I want to thank our uh, counterterrorism forces, Special Operations Force, who have done a great job this year. These operations have been done in conjunction with our Afghan partners. So, uh, highlights this year, I mentioned there were 20 terrorist groups in the region. Seven of those are in Pakistan. Of these 20, our CT forces with, operating with the Afghans have killed five of the emirs of the 20 organizations. They have inflicted, uh, if, for example, to take Islamic State. So, Islamic State has lost a third of its fighters two-thirds of the territory that they have seized, and we have killed the top 12 leaders, including their Amir, uh, Hafez Sayyid Khan. So this is just one example against Al-Qaeda, Farouk Al-Qatari, who was the external operations director for Al-Qaeda, was killed on October 23rd, along with a few of his associates. Uh, he was involved within the last year in active uh, plotting against uh, the West, against the United States and our allies. So by removing him, we have severely disrupted their ability to do that. We'll continue to keep the pressure on these organizations, and we'll continue to take the fight to them. Uh, and so we, uh, the medium within which some of these groups like uh, Islamic State and Al-Qaeda operate is provided in part by the uh, other insurgent and terrorist organizations in the country. So pressure on the, on the whole is important. 
I also want to point out the Afghans' uh, key role in all of this. So, 80% of the operations uh, done by the Afghan Special Forces are independent of U.S. Uh, enablers, but those operations are critical in keeping pressure on these uh, organizations. What if you would not characterize Al Qaeda today? Does Al Qaeda represent a threat to the United States at this point in Afghanistan? Al Qaeda has the intent uh, to attack the United States. Their capability, we're working hard on that, on reducing that capability. But what you see, you have uh, core Al Qaeda, you also have Al Qaeda's affiliates. So here in Afghanistan, we have a group called Al Qaeda and the Indian subcontinent. And so the two of these groups together have the intent and the capability to conduct attacks outside of Afghanistan. And in the case of, Al of core Al Qaeda, they certainly have the intent uh, to try to conduct operations against the United States. Thanks, hey, Secretary. Um, with regards to today, President Ghani spoke at length about how the commitment took resources and the commitment of continued U.S. personnel here had gone a long way in terms of boosting morale to the country. But given that there's a transition, a, a new administration coming in, are you hearing any expressions of concern from the Afghan partners, whether in the Afghan military or within the Afghan political establishment? And if I may just quickly, uh, General, you've described the moderate level of risk with the current resources. Um, would, what additional resources would reduce that risk? Is it more trainers, more air assets, those kind of things? Well, with respect to the first part of the question, no, it wasn't, I did, it, there was a concern. Um, uh, we did talk about the future. Uh, so in addition to President Ghani uh, uh, thanking the United States and the coalition for the decisions made over the last year, uh, support, um, we did talk about the future. Um, we talked about the so-called winter reset, uh, which is important to look ahead to next summer. Uh, we, looked, we, we talked about the importance of uh, political unity here in Afghanistan, continuing into the future. Uh, we talked about the continued need for economic uh, and, uh, uh, reform and any corruption, um, and we talked about uh, regional security affairs and the actions of others in the area, uh, including their actions uh, within Afghanistan. So it was a very forward-looking uh, uh, conversation. Uh, but the reason why I think uh, President Ghani has confidence in the future of his uh, country is uh, uh, importantly, because of some of the decisions taken over the last year. Um, the Secretary of Russia, I think that was for a Thanks, Mr. Secretary. Well, thanks for the question. And, uh, and, and to reiterate on the Warsaw Summit, so when we talk about Afghan uh, morale and hope for the future, the international decision of this coalition to recommit to four more years uh, provided a huge boost in morale to the government to the Afghan security forces themselves, but mainly to the Afghan people. So I think uh, in July, that renewal of commitment and then the, the follow-on at Brussels with the renewed uh, donor commitment was extremely important to Afghan uh, morale. Uh, we have seen, despite the fact that this was a tough year, and I would say the Afghan security forces were tested, but they prevailed, we've actually seen a, a decrease in the number of Afghans who uh, say they would seek to emigrate now, I, I know they, these are small signs of, of, of uh, morale. I already mentioned the fact that 87% uh, you know, of the people do not want to see a return of the Taliban. Uh, but with respect to the question on risk, I've said it's a moderate but acceptable level of risk. And in terms of uh, what uh, are we doing, of course, we're primarily doing our counterterrorism mission. And when I need additional assets for that, they are brought in uh, for the duration that we need them, and then they can depart again. So there's been I've been able to get everything I've needed when it comes to my counterterrorism mission. And with respect to the advising mission, what we've done uh, this year is sort of reorganized our advisors and gone back to some of our allies, uh, especially with respect to, for example, the training base, the schools, the education system. And we've got some great contributions from uh, many of our allies on this. 
Uh, the Germans, the Italians, the Brits in particular have all provided uh, additional focused uh, groups of advisors in some of these key areas. So in the NATO system, every six months we do a review of the mission. It's called a periodic mission review. And then we review our requirements. Then we go out to the alliance with, the, with those needs. And so this uh, process uh, is what, uh, you know, as we get the numbers back in from all the allies, that's what causes me to gauge my risk. So, uh, but I should point out, we're not only asking the U.S. for these, we also go out to all our allies as well. I just came here from the foreign ministerials meeting in Brussels with NATO. I was very encouraged by what we heard from the nations and the foreign ministers. I think uh, when you look at the range of challenges uh, facing NATO, uh, there remains a strong commitment to Afghanistan. Uh, going, going forward, as mentioned at Warsaw and Brussels, and now again at the Foreign Ministers. So I feel like we will have the resources we need going forward. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Um, from the Economist. Um, so when I've been here on previous visits in the years, there was a time when people talked about the security piece of nation building, building schools, girls going to school, governance, kind of working to trade on civil servants, all that stuff. There's clearly a lot less of that now, and you have a president elect who says he doesn't do nation building. How is there any extent to which nation building is still part of your mission? Are you at all in the business of nation building as you perceive the security objectives? Well, our, our mission is principally the security mission. Yeah. I'll say something that you uh, uh, which is as I've characterized it. Uh, there is also an international assistance mission here in Afghanistan, um, uh, which we're, we can't speak for, uh, but which is also uh, extremely important, which is aimed at uh, political development and economic development uh, here in the country, uh, and that continues. Uh, but the reason for the U.S. military commitment uh, here uh, are the reasons, uh, David, that I cited before, uh, which are the need to protect our own country and our own people first and foremost uh, from attacks emanating uh, from here, and secondly, the recognition that this is an important part of the world and that to have a stable security partner who is eager and willing to work with the United States uh, is uh, an asset for the future for us in security terms. So those are the reasons uh, why uh, we're here, and uh, in particular why Jeff, uh, General Nicholson and all these wonderful people here you see at Bagram here. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, David, what I'd add, I'd add to what the Secretary said, uh, in 2014 we shifted our mission from ISAF uh, doing counterinsurgency to resolute support conducting train advise assist. So when we uh, ended our counterinsurgency mission, those uh, other dimensions that you mentioned uh, to nation building and development were picked up uh, by the international community and, and led by our diplomatic missions. I would point out a couple of things. I already mentioned the Brussels donor conference with uh, 15 billion uh, expressed intent to commit. Let me highlight a couple of folks. Uh, the Indians, for example, give, yeah, have given a billion dollars uh, to the Afghans thus far and have now committed to additional uh, billion, excuse me, two billion dollars thus far and committed to an additional billion. Uh, you see uh, the U.S., this is one of our largest development programs. It remains not administered, of course, by the Pentagon, but by the State Department and USAID. So we see continued uh, strong commitment in, in many of these other areas going forward. In the, uh, speaking on the military side, it's also worth noting that when Secretary Carter became the Secretary of Defense, you know, we had close to 100,000 uh, troops here, and now we're down to one-tenth of that. So the, 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 the way we've been able to do that is because the Afghan security capability has been uh, built up over that same period to where they now provide over 300,000 uh, service uh, members, police, out there securing the country with our advising and assisting, again, at one-tenth of the level we once were. So we've seen a real shift in terms of our uh, focus uh, going forward. So that's reflected not only uh, in the uh, uh, 
in the numbers of troops, but also it's actually uh, in, in our mission statement, it's, it's what we do. Do we consult with those other efforts? Absolutely. But uh, we are not directly involved in that uh, from, from the uh, resident support of U.S. forces Afghanistan perspective. That's a great, great It's just if, if the United States, if other bits of the United States government stop what could be called nation building, would that make your task hard? I think the, um, you're, we're talking about factors uh, such as economic development, uh, demographics, uh, counter narcotics, uh, and, and all these factors are very important. Other actors uh, in the landscape here, uh, primarily through our diplomatic efforts and donors, are focused on those issues. We, we certainly uh, stay, uh, try to coordinate our activities with them, uh, but, but our main focus is, uh, is on, uh, on the security dimension. And again, from my assessment as a commander on the ground, the Afghans are making steady progress in that, in that arena. And that's been proven this year uh, in the fact that they were tested, they prevailed, and they, the enemy sought to take their take cities away from them on eight separate occasions. Let me, let me go one day, the 6th of October, there were simultaneous attacks on four Afghan cities. The Afghans defeated them all. And this is, uh, shows a maturing army that can deal with complexity and simultaneity in a way that they had not been able to do in the past. So we're very encouraged by what we see.